Hi, my name is Rachel and welcome to the Art Crew. Today we will be going over the different types of paintbrushes and what they do when using either oil or acrylic paints. So let's get started. To get started, we're going to talk about the four main parts of any paintbrush. First, there's the bristles, which are made out of either natural or synthetic hairs, or sometimes both. Then you have the ferrule, which is that metal section and it holds the bristles to the handle of the brush. You have the crimp, which holds the ferrule to the handle. And then you have the handle, which comes in a variety of lengths and widths. Now let's talk about brush shapes. The first shape that we'll be talking about is called a round. Round paintbrushes have rounded points that are fairly long and cylindrical. And these brushes create a variety of detail and line weight, meaning thick or thin lines, based on pressure. Now, round paintbrushes come in two other variations called the pointed round and the detailed round. Now, both of these brushes are great for creating even finer details and are wonderful for touch up. And the difference between the two is that a detailed round has shorter bristles and can hold more paint than the pointed round. Next, we have flat brushes. Flat brushes are typically used for filling in large areas, for creating bold strokes, or because of their very straight edge, they are excellent for creating crisp lines and stripes. In my own practice, I predominantly use a flat brush at the very beginning of a painting to block in colors quickly without worrying too much about detail, and then I follow up with it at the end when I need to create sharp lines. After the flat brush comes its cousin, the bright. Bright brushes look very similar to flat brushes, except that their bristles are shorter and their edges taper inward slightly. This brush is excellent for creating thick, short, controlled strokes. And because it can hold a lot of paint, it's great for working in an impasto painting style. This brush is typically the next brush I would use in my own process when wanting to push my layers a little further before getting into the nitty gritty details. Next, we have my most used brush in my own practice, which is the Filbert. Filberts have a very rounded top edge and look somewhat similar to flats. And of course, this brush gets its name because it looks so similar to none other than the Filbert nut. Now, filbert brushes are great because they can cover a medium size area, they're wonderful for blending, and they create soft edges. It's also a great brush because it has versatility in mark making, as it can create hard lines, soft lines, and very fine detail, which is why I use it the most out of any brushes in my toolbox. Now, we're going to talk about the fan brush. Fan brushes are typically used for blending, feathering, and creating natural forms like clouds and leaves on trees, which many people have seen in action with none other than Bob Ross. The important thing to know about a fan brush is typically a synthetic bristle fan brush will be a little easier to use than a natural hair fan brush just because the bristles won't clump together. And last but certainly not least is a mop brush. I've saved mop brushes for last because they're typically used for oil paints. However, I will say you can use them with acrylic paints as long as you remember that you have to work with very wet paint. So you may be wondering what mop brushes do. Well, mop brushes are used to create very smooth gradients, to buff out backgrounds, and create very soft natural edges. And for oil painters, it's often used for a process called glazing. Now, in my own practice, I typically use a mop brush at the very beginning of my painting in my background to help create a sense of realism and softness. So those are the various types of shapes of paintbrushes and what they do. But before we go, I want to say that brush size and handle length matter. You see, almost every brush that I talked about can be used to create the fine details that many artists crave, but it all depends on the size of the brush. And vice versa, if you're looking to create a certain textural quality, like maybe very visible brush strokes, you can use brushes that I mentioned are good for detail, but at a larger scale to create those kinds of bigger details. So brush size is definitely important. And if you're just beginning, I suggest picking out a filbert, a bright, 
a flat and a round brush and try to get it in at least two different sizes because that'll give you a chance to play as much of this comes down to artist preference. And lastly, handle length matters. The reason why is when we hold our paint brushes, the closer we are to the ferrule, the more tight, short control we have, and the further away we are from it, the more loose control we have. So having a longer handle means that we have a bigger variety of control compared to a shorter handle. However, I use both in my own practice, but I do tend to lean more on my longer handle brushes than my shorter handle brushes. So now you know about all the different types of paint brushes, what they do, and what you should expect when you use them on your canvas. Now, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Or if you'd like to see more art education videos or stuff from my own practice, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, happy painting, and I look forward to seeing you next time.